In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create the basic steps for cutting this wing spar in the software. We'll start by setting up a job, whereby we'll then look at importing vectors into the session. And with those vectors, we're going to look at creating the toolpaths to cut this part out. And then finally, we'll show you how to save out the toolpaths to then run them on your CNC machine. So let's go to File, Close, so we'll go ahead and start by creating a new file. So the software will automatically open up the job setup form where we can specify the job type, the size and different positions that we need to input. So starting at the top, we have our job type where we have a single sided job or a double sided job. Now I don't intend on machining on both sides of my material for this project. So I'm going to use the single sided option. And we need to specify the job size. So this is how big we want our part to be. In which case, I'm going to alter the width here to be eight inches. The height is going to be two inches and the material thickness that we're going to work with is going to be an eighth of an inch in there. You can choose to work in metric if you wanted to by clicking on the metric option here. In this case, we're just going to do this example in inches. Moving on down, we have to set the Z0 position, so whether that's on the material surface or on the machine bed. In this case, we're going to use the material surface. We can see that the red dot has changed and it's indicating to us that the position is set to the top of our material surface in this graphic of our material block here. And then finally, we need to set our X, Y date and position. So this is your X zero, Y zero. It's currently set to the center. We can see the red dot is in the center of the job graphic over on the left here. We can also see the red square in the center of our job in the 2D view as well, where this position represents zero, zero. Anything above this point will be in positive values. Anything below, this point will be in negative values in the y-axis. Anything to the right of this red square is going to be positive in the x-axis. And then anything to the left of this red square is going to have values that are negative in the x-axis. So we're going to change this so that everything's positive and we're going to put that in the lower left-hand corner. So now everything above that red square is going to be positive values in the y-axis and everything to the right is also going to be positive values in the x-axis. Once you're happy, you could go ahead and then press OK. So now that our job has been created, we now have access to the many vector creation and editing tools within the drawing tab. So we're going to look at importing vectors from a file that's been created in another CAD program. So we're going to use this option here to import vectors from a file into our current job. From the Wingspar project folder, we're going to open the wingspar.dxf file and you can see that's been imported here. If we use this option here to zoom active view to our drawing limits, we can see where the vectors on, from this file have been positioned relative to our job and we can see it's not actually within our job space. And this is down to the position of which they were originally drawn and saved out to in the CAD program in which it was created, which is no problem as we can look at aligning the vectors to the center of our workspace. So with those vectors selected, we can simply come over here to align selected objects, whereby we can align them both horizontally and vertically to our material, like so, close out, and then we can simply use this option here again, just to zoom into our workspace. So that's pretty much the vector side of things for this example. So now we're going to look at how we can use these vectors and then create toolpaths from them. So we're going to come over here and we're going to use this option here to switch to our toolpaths commands. That's just going to undraw the drawing or the design tabs and it's going to open up the toolpaths tab. Now if we wanted to go back, we can use this icon here and that will just switch back over 
to the drawing tab and it will hide the toolpaths tab. But if you wanted to quickly glance at any of the tabs in the design side of things, you can simply hover over them and you'll see that they're temporarily drawn out, in which case we don't need to see them, but at least we know how to do that. So the first thing that you need to do and the most important thing you need to do is check over your material setup. So here we have some visual indicators represented by these graphics that we've got here. We can see straight away Z0 is set to the top of our material surface. Our material thickness is an eighth of an inch thick. Our XY position is in the lower left hand corner where our home position is at X0, Y0. And we have uh, rapid safe gaps of 0.2 there. And so these graphics are handy little illustrations just to prompt us as to what settings we currently have. But as we are a beginner using the software, we should get into the habit of using the set option to really take a look at your material setup. So here we're currently working on sheet one. We only have one sheet. That's why we're seeing that there. The material thickness for this sheet is an eighth of an inch. XY datum position is in the lower left. We can see that by the graphic there. Z0 position on the material surface. We've got rapid Z gaps above the material. Now, these are values that are used for the tool to retract to before it moves to the next position in the toolpath. And so it's important to ensure uh, that the values that you've got here are high enough that the tool will clear any clamping or hold down method that you may be using. So we're going to put point 0.2 for both of those values in here. And then you've got your home start position. And so this is just a value that I enter to give the software a location to move the tool to before we start the cut, which is at zero, zero with a Z gap of 0.8. And then we could simply go ahead and press OK once you're happy with everything. So now let's take a look at how we can take these vectors and run a profile pass to cut this out of our material block. So with those selected, let's go over to the profile toolpath. So first off, we need to specify our cutting depths. So we have a start depth and we have a cut depth. So start depth is where you're going to start from. In our case, we're going to start that at zero, which is on the material surface. Next up, we need to specify a cut depth. So you could type in a value in here, how far down you want to cut to. If you wanted the software to input information for you, let's say, for instance, we wanted the software to tell us what thickness of material we've set for this job, we could simply type in Z, followed by the equals key and the software will auto fill that field with whatever the, that value was that we had set for our material thickness. So we're going to cut down an eighth of an inch. That's going to cut all the way through our material. Next up, we need to specify a tool. So we can use the select option and that's going to open up the tool database. So here we can choose a different tool for example, I can select an 8 inch tool and here I'm able to see all of the different settings we've got set for that tool within this tool database. We can see that we have a diameter of an eighth of an inch. We can see the pass step and the step over and various options for the feeds and speeds. And so ensuring that these settings are safe and appropriate for you, you could go ahead and press select. But it's always good to know that if you wanted to edit any of those settings for that tool for this particular toolpath, you can do that by going into the edit tool options where you can alter the various settings that you've got in here. For example, you could maybe slow down the spindle speed for this tool, for this particular toolpath and press OK and it won't actually affect the spindle speed that's actually saved in the tool database. And so it's handy to know that if you're wanting to edit different fields and parameters for a tool for a specific toolpath, you can do that using the edit option here. So next up is where we specify how we machine those vectors on the outside, the inside or on those vectors. Now you can see looking at our vectors, we have one outer vector and we've got three vectors inside of that. Now we want to machine outside 
the vector on the outside vector and then we want to machine on the inside of these internal vectors. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the outside option and the software cleverly knows that if there's vectors inside of other vectors it's going to machine the outer vectors on the outside and any internal vectors will automatically machine those on the inside. So we're just going to leave that set to outside here. So next up we have the option to specify a ramp plunge move. So rather than the tool plunging down directly into the material, what we can do is we can apply a ramp move where the tool will plunge in at an angle, reducing the wear of the tool itself, as well as reducing the heat buildup of the tool. And so it's good practice to use a ramp plunge move here. So we're just going to specify a distance of a half an inch. Next up, we have the option to add tabs to our toolpath. So if you don't have a vacuum hold down system, you're probably going to want to add tabs to the toolpath. And these are just very little pieces of material that connect your part to that of the material that you're cutting out of. So it doesn't run the risk of it flying out once it's done the cutout pass. So we're going to look at adding tabs to this toolpath. We can specify a length, so we'll go 0 0.15 in here, followed by a thickness of 0.1 in there. And then we can use the Edit Tabs option to position our tabs. And we can go in and we can just click anywhere on the vector to insert those tabs. So I think 4 here seems to do the trick. And if I wanted to, I could move them. If I didn't like where they were positioned, I could click on them to delete them. And then I can click to reinsert a new tab into position. So we've got four tabs in there holding that in place and then we can simply close out. We'll give this a name, we're going to call this one Profile followed by 0.125EM for end mill. And that's more so for me just to glance at the name to know which tool I've assigned to this particular toolpath. So then we could go ahead and press Calculate. And then that, what will happen there is the software will automatically open up the preview toolpaths form along with the 3D view to help us visualise the toolpath being previewed here. So let's take a look at our preview down the ISO view. That just enables us to see a little better what's going on here. So you can see we have various different colours and each one of these colours represents a different type of move. So let's take a closer look at that. So we're just going to spin this round a little bit. Okay, so first off, the red line represents a rapid move. So that's the tool going into a rapid move, into position, where it will then go and plunge into the material to then cut the first pass out okay so red is basically the travel and then we've got uh, the rapid plunge of the light blue lines that you can see here so we've got that rapid um, movement on our profile pass as it's plunging in so it's going diagonally rather than plunging uh, directly into the material vertically and then the dark blue line represents the feed so that's then going to then run a pass and then once we get to the start point of this particular part it's then going to apply another ramp plunge move where it's zigzagging back on itself and then it's going to cut the second part out so you can see that second feed line and then the green line represents a retract so this is where the tool is going to lift out from once it's done this and then it's going to have a rapid move to the next part where it's going to then plunge down in the ramp there and it's going to run through the feed for the first pass and then again we're just going to plunge in that ramp there and then run the second pass where it's then going to retract out and then move on to the next position. We can see that the tools is retracting up here for the tabs and so we're not actually cutting away here and it's this that's going to keep those tabs in place and it's going to hold our part safely and securely to our material block. So then what we can do is we could go ahead and preview um, our toolpath. 
So first off, I can see that we're looking at this in a cherry material. And if you wanted to change that uh, to something that looked more like the material you're cutting into, then you can do so by clicking on this palette here for your sheet and then use the drop down menu to apply any one of these um, built in textures that you've got in here. And you can also look at adding in new textures as well using the add new texture option. In which case, we're just going to go ahead with the cherry option here. We're just going to alter the machine area color so that we're just seeing the material color. And then we could go ahead and preview that. And so we can slow down our toolpath preview and then we can simply preview that. We can see exactly how this is going to machine on our CNC. And if we wanted to, we could then go ahead and speed that up. And really, this is the beauty of the preview in that we can get a good idea of what the part will look like. And so you can see that the wing spar will be securely held down to the material thanks to these tabs that we've added in here. Now there is one potential problem that I can see here and that is that we have loose waste material on the inside of our cutout which could essentially rip away ruining the inside cutout. It also has the potential to damage the tool itself as the part is loose then the vibrations of the machine could move the loose part into the tool and then with that it could cause injury damage if the loose part gets flung out by the tool and so to avoid any of these problems we could look at adding tabs on the inside and so to do that we can simply double click on our profile toolpath to open that back up and then we could look at editing our tabs where it automatically will open up the 2D view. And we can use this option here to zoom active view to our drawing limits. In which case we can now go in there and just add in two tabs to each one of those internal sections. We can close out and then we can calculate that. We can reset that preview and then we could simply go ahead and preview that toolpath. And we can see now that those tabs are held securely in place along with the outer part there. And you can see that looks much better. And this really is the beauty of the toolpath preview in that we're able to catch these potential errors where these parts could fly out before we get to the CNC machine where we can fix everything from within the toolpath and within the software. And so at this stage, it's a case of us saving our toolpaths into a format that our CNC machine can understand. So let's switch on the visibility of this toolpath and then we're just going to go into the save toolpath option. So here we have our toolpath selected. We can see we currently have the selected toolpath to save that. And we can see in our list here, toolpaths to be saved, we've got the profile eighth inch end mill tool, which is listed over here. And so for demonstration purposes, we're just going to save that to our desktop machine that uses the post processor G-code arcs inches. And you'll need to ensure that your machine and the post processors for that machine are used here. And you can learn more about machine configuration and saving toolpaths in the related videos section for this tutorial. So we'll just simply go ahead and save the toolpaths and you'll see that the software will automatically input the name of our toolpath as the file name. So we'll just leave that as that is and then we can go ahead and save that. And then we we'll just simply take this .tap file over to our CNC machine to then run on our machine and cut out this wing spar. So let's just go ahead now and close out. And so that concludes this tutorial. So at this point, it's a good idea to save the file as well so that we can refer back to this at a later date should we want to make any changes to it. So to do that, we can simply come over to File, Save As, and in the project folder, we're just going to call this one Wingspar Getting Started save that and you can access that from the project folder.